All right, welcome back. We've got Dr. Malik Johnson here answering all of your oral health questions. So let's pick up where we left off here. Is there any way to reverse the effects of periodontal disease? Reverse the effects, not reverse the effects. Because once periodontal, so periodontal disease is actually disease of the tissues that support the tooth, right? So it's the gums, it's the bone around the gums, it's all that that supports the tooth. So unfortunately, when you get periodontal disease, it's because you've lost that bone and, you know, you've had disease processes that have really literally eaten away at bone and supporting structures. So to get that back, you'd have to get some type of grafting or something to actually add back bony support, if that makes sense. But you can't reverse periodontal disease, but you can get it under control. You can basically cease it where it starts, where it, where it has, you know, last kind of taken you. You can you can stop it. You can correct it. You can go forth. Um, typically, that requires a few cleanings a year instead of your typical two. Um, you might need three or four. You might need to come in every three months and get a cleaning. Um, typically, deep cleanings and then maintenance of those. You might have a special rinse. Your dentist might prescribe you. You might just whatever regimen that you guys come up with. You might have to see a periodontist. You can't reverse the effects, but you can stabilize periodontal disease and have a cleaner, healthier mouth afterwards. Okay. This person's asking, what happens to our teeth as we age? Mm. Good question. Well, um, it's very dependent on how you take care of your teeth as you age. Um, but naturally, you will see enamel wear as you age. Um, you will see some recession around your teeth. The gums will start to kind of pull away from the teeth as you age, sometimes increase sensitivity. Sometimes teeth get looser, but again, it's all kind of dependent on how you treat your teeth. If you're nice to your teeth, if you're taking care of them, um, if you're not grinding, if you're not chewing ice, if you're not just uh, doing destructive type of things to your teeth, then they're going to last you a long time. Um, I mean, teeth are the strongest bones in the entire body. So if you're good to them, the better you are to them. Um, keeping your mouth, you know, uh, hydrated, not drying out. So that means, you know, less smoking. Uh, if you can help with less medications and, you know, more water and just better diet, things like that, your teeth are going to hold up a lot longer than someone who's not taking as good a care. Not to mention the flossing, which should be done. There you go. Yes. Okay. And the brushing. And I loved what you said about the when you should be brushing and why. Mm -hmm. So I just want to continue to say that. Yeah. Brush in the morning to keep your friends and brush at night to keep your teeth right two times a day. <laughs> okay. All right. This person's saying, can certain medications discolor or stain your teeth? Yes. Um, the most common medications to stain and discolor teeth would be antibiotics. Um, specifically, one comes to mind called tetracycline. It's used a lot with acne treatments and uh, things like that. Um, that's one that can often stain teeth. Um, some antihypertensive medications can stain teeth. Some rinses when used um, past the prescribed um, dosage can stain teeth. Uh, but the biggest one I could think of is tetracycline antibiotics. Okay. Um, this is an interesting question. It says, I keep refusing x-rays for personal reasons, and dentists are now refusing to see me. Do I really need x-rays, and are there any other options? Yes, we really need x-rays. And unfortunately, there are not any other options. Um, we can't see internal, we, we can't really see what we need to see without the x-rays. Um, you can, I know people are worried about like the radiation dosages and things like that, but we're actually taught that there's more radiation just walking down the street due to, you know, waves and radio waves and all sorts, sorts of things than there are from actual x-rays. So I wouldn't be as concerned about that. Um, your dentist, is only trying to help you and we can't like we're not x-ray monsters you know we're not trying to zap everybody um we really are just trying to help and we need x-rays to see what's going on with your mm -hmm. this person says i just had a root canal done do i really need to have a crown put on it i heard that it's not worth it yes it is worth it <laughs> yes okay. you need that crown um, um so when you get a root canal you're taking out the nerve of the tooth, right, and replacing it with uh, a material that is just biocompatible. Um, however, that nerve is, you know, it's getting blood flow. It's a lot of things that, that having that nerve in that tooth does for that tooth. 
it basically like gives it its muscle. So after you take the nerve out of the tooth, it's pretty much hollow. Um, and it's not going to be able to withstand all the chewing and eating and smiling we like to do without a proper crown. So if you get that root, if you do the initial investment of getting the root canal, that means you want to save the tooth. So if you want to continue to actually save the tooth, you need to put the crown on it as well. All right. To save it, you need that crown. All right. This person's asking, should senior citizens have wisdom teeth removed if they're not experiencing issues? Hmm. If you're, I know me personally, when I have patients who have wisdom teeth and they're past, you know, a certain age, I mean, if they're in their 50s or 60s, you know, 70s, 80s, and you've had that tooth that long and it's not bothering you, I'm not one to go and, and, and go and take it out. I like to, you know, if it's not broke, we're not going to fix it. So if it's not bothering you, I'm not recommending that you have to have it extracted. Okay. This person's asking, how old is too old for dental implants? And what advice do you have for people who have dental implants? Mm. So I guess there wouldn't be too old. Um, as long as you are healthy enough and you have enough bone in certain areas, I wouldn't say there's there's too old. Now, I will say um, certain things will be automatic red flags for, for implant placement. Um, if you are a heavy smoker, uh, you're not going to be a prime candidate for an implant. If you have, you know, teeth surrounding that are in poor condition, if you have periodontal disease, that's going to kind of cancel you out from the implant sweepstakes. Um, there are things, you know, obviously you want to be as healthy as possible. And if you're healthy as possible and you're 90 years old and you want to implant, I mean, I don't see why we couldn't do it, right? Um, and if you're a person who has dental implants, you want to keep them as clean as possible. Um, keep the environment around them clean. Whatever, if you're wearing a denture, if it's a single tooth on an implant, if it's the denture hooked to the implants, you know, clean the inside of the denture. Just keep everything as clean as you can. Take it out every day. Um, now, if you have the actual implant, you want to treat it like a tooth. You really want to treat it better than a tooth. Right, because you know, chances are you didn't treat that first tooth that great, and that's why you had the implant. So treat it better than a tooth. Clean around it, floss it, brush it. It's even more pivotal that you get your exams done twice a year at that point because we need to make sure the implant's doing good. Um, if you're investing money into these things, take the time to go get them checked out and make sure they're doing. Okay, we've got one last segment, and this is going to be part of it. How much toothpaste do you need to put on your toothbrush? We're going to answer that when we come back.